across the nation. Secretary Vilsack, could you, and we are negotiating through those now. But uh, thank you, Chairman Thompson. I really appreciate that. Um, Secretary Vilsack, uh, both my Democratic and Republican colleagues certainly want to pass a bipartisan farm bill. Um, and the year's extension is giving us more time to work out our differences, and we are negotiating through those now. But uh, I know that Chairman Thompson and I feel the same about this. We definitely want a bipartisan farm bill. I hear from my nation's farmers quite regularly that they want and need certainty. They want and they need new markets. And in that regard, I want to thank you for creating RAP. And RAP means Regional Agriculture Promotion Programs. It helps our commodities farmers. Um, um, and certainly, it helps um, groups like our soybean farmers and others to be able to navigate the challenges we are facing today. And for those of you who may be listening to this hearing across the nation, Secretary Vilsack, could you share with us and the nation your thoughts on this? Why a bipartisan bill passed this year is very vital and very important and why it's got to be done. Uh, well, Representative Scott, uh, I think it's fair to say that every farmer, every rancher, and, and everyone who lives in rural America uh, depends in large part on uh, uh, the Farm Bill programs. Uh, a Farm Bill is more than that. Uh, it's a rural development bill. It's a conservation bill. It's a nutrition bill. It's a research bill. Uh, it's a trade bill. Uh, it's a risk management bill. Uh, it is a broad uh, opportunity to say to rural America and to the, uh, American agriculture, uh, that we care, uh, that we're investing in their future, and we're providing stability. The failure to have a farm bill uh, creates uncertainty, and that uncertainty makes it very difficult for producers to make decisions about their operations, to decide whether or not they're going to diversify their crop, to decide whether or not they're going to take advantage of new crop insurance. By the way, we've had uh, 12 new policies and 50 new modifications to crop insurance just in the last three years. Um, do they take advantage of those or not? Uh, it's very difficult for land-grant universities, minority-serving institutions that rely uh, on the direction of the Farm Bill and the research title to know whether or not uh, they can move forward with critical research, which obviously will impact and affect mm -hmm. things. Uh, it's difficult for those in the Chamber of Commerce and Economic Development uh, uh, offices across the counties uh, to know whether or not they need to plan for new opportunities. I mean, it, the bottom line is right. you've got to get it done. Let me uh, uh, get to another question that's very important. Mr. Vilsack, I know you testified to your commitment to getting IRA dollars out the door so our farmers in rural communities can benefit from these investments. And I want to applaud you for those efforts and dedication. But can you give us an update on where things stand? 99.8% of the money obligated, uh, th that was set out in the IRA for 2023 was obligated. Uh, EQIP, uh, 2,812 landowners received contracts, nearly 8,000 applications. Uh, the research or the easement program, uh, 69 producers received assistance, 250 applications. Yeah, my uh, time is getting a bit short here. Let me also ask you, did you meet your spending goals last year? Absolutely, because the goal was to get the money out the door. And uh, are you on target to spend all you have planned for this year? Yes, because the demand is there. And demand are is you still hiring more staff, or has a hiring 
uh, plateaued, plateaued. Be because of the money and resources in the IRA, we're able to continue to uh, increase NRCS, over 1,500 new people working at NRCS, and we've expanded through technical assistance, cooperative agreements, additional help and assistance. Thank you, and I just want to personally thank you for the great work you've done with me and many other members on this committee in making sure our 1890s student scholarship program is now permanent and it passed in a very strong bipartisan way into the Farm Bill and we're making that scholarship permanent. Hopefully that addresses some of the concerns that you expressed about making sure that we have farmers for generations to come. Thank you. I thank the gentleman. Now recognize the distinguished gentleman, uh, the chairman emeritus from Oklahoma, Mr. Lucas, for five minutes. Which is a polite way of saying the old guy. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Secretary. And kind of in that role, you've had an outstanding career too. You've been secretary, what, 10 of the last 14 years? Going That's on 11. Going on 11, that's pretty amazing to have been around that long in what sometimes is a challenging agency, uh, directing policy. So your imprint is in a lot of places, and I'm impressed and I congratulate you for that. And I know that every administration is different. The Obama administration is certainly different than the Trump administration. And in some ways, the Biden administration is different even than the Obama or Trump administration. But that said, Mr. Secretary, it's always been clear to me that the strongest policies that come out of this committee and the most important programs administered by USDA are built on the belief that support and relief programs must be tied to crop production. When this committee uh, or your agency stray from that principle, we begin to walk down an unsustainable and a very concerning path. When you last appeared before this committee, I raised concerns about your agency's design and implementation of phase two of the emergency relief program for 2021 crop year and called for a return to the EP ERP phase one mythology. You said that your agency would learn from their experiences during the first iteration of ERP and would factor it into the administration of the next. Well, based on the reports that I'm hearing from my producers in Oklahoma, ERP 2022 has proven to be no better than its predecessor at delivering support to those who suffered the greatest crop losses. So my question to you today is exactly where those lessons your agency learned from the administration of 2021 ERP program, uh, what were those lessons and how did it change the approach in 2022? And while you're thinking about that as a follow up, uh, what has your agency learned from ERP 2022 rollout and what change are some of the changes that we can expect to see in future programs administered? Well, one change would be for Congress to give us the resources we ask for. I mean, when you give us 30 percent of what we ask for, when we tell you that the, the damages are 10 to 12 billion dollars and you basically appropriate three billion, you put us in a tough spot. But Mr. Secretary, when you change the program so that you screw up the delivery and screw up the 30 percent, it, it makes it difficult it, to come it, back and ask for the other 70. It, it didn't screw up. Uh, at all. In fact, 82% of producers say that they want and need certainty. Secretary Vilsack, uh, both my Democratic and Republican colleagues certainly want to pass a bipartisan. Uh, I know that Chairman Thompson and I feel this today. And for those of you who may be listening to this hearing, rap. And RAP means regional agriculture farmers. Um, um, and certainly it helped him about this. We definitely want a bipartisan farm bill. others to be able to navigate the challenges we are facing. Them. I hear from my nation's farmers quite regularly. Do share with us and the nation your thoughts on this. 